Morning, we are back. Um, and on today's episode, we're gonna straighten my hat, we're gonna pull the oil pump off, inspect the oil pump, and then take the big end shells off. So this is how to do that. I'm a bit more somber this morning. First job is get the oil pump out, which is that bolt, that bolt, that bolt, that bolt, that bolt, and that bolt. So let's do that. For instance, that one there is shorter, that one that I've just taken out. But that will be obvious because you can see how these are stood down and that one's not. So these short ones will be, um, these short ones will be at the back and that will be really obvious for me when I'm rebuilding this. We can discover this together. <laughs> This is the inside of the oil pump. Someone has clearly been here before. So that's chewed up when it, it shouldn't be. Look at the state of that. At this point, that's not even really oil. The plus side is there's a lot of this and it was stuck in the engine. Look at that, that's like absolutely disgusting. Ugh. <sighs> the ultrasonic cleaner is going to get in a bit of a workout, isn't it? I do love my ultrasonic cleaner, I'm not going to lie. So you can see as well, the oil pump's been making contact on there. The drive for the oil pump. Doesn't feel bad. It looks like it's just been brushing on it. That doesn't actually look that bad. Someone else might look at that and go, no, that's fucked. Um, but I, I'm unsure. That doesn't look too bad either. So that's not horrendous so far. But that is definitely the cause of the low oil pressure. Even after that's been butchered up with brake cleaner, that's still barely moving. Oh. Let's see what's going on up here. So this is the the drive, there's not any slack in that, which is good. This is the drive here. Now this drive, when this comes out, you can't take that out without removing the engine or at least lifting it up. Because that also drives the distributors and that's the distributors, distributor, and that's driven by the camshaft. I don't particularly want the bottom of that getting absolutely minging. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let it drop down to about there but I'm gonna just prop it up with a rag because I don't want it getting minging. There you go. Right. Let's clean all of this up, break cleaner the hell out of it, and pull the big end shells out. So, I have given everything a good clean down. And I've gotta say, it's not looking anywhere near as bad as I thought it would. I had a good inspection. I couldn't see any metal swarf or anything like that. It looks like this car has just been really badly serviced in its life. So let's get on it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the big end shells off now. The way that I do it, and I'm not saying this is the best way and that everyone in the world should do it, but I like to get four boxes and I mark them one, two, three, four, and then I write near side and off side. So I know I've gone one, two, three, four, and I know which bolt came from which side and which cap came from top or bottom. And then I can put these in 
in the same way that they came off the rod. Job done. One. Two. Take this cap off. Let's get the first lurk. So this is why, you know, people are saying like, oh, you know, you, you started it with no oil pressure. There's still loads of oil coming out and there's still loads of oil in this. So this is the first shell that is a very worn crank shell. Big end shell, whatever you want to call that. I'm going to call it a big end shell. Kept yelling all the time. Well, I appreciate that. Spot on. Well, we'll, let, we'll see you well. soon. Anything that we, anything you need beforehand, don't, don't hesitate to give me a ring, all right? No problem. Cheers, Jared. Cheers, mate. Hey, thank you. Bye. Thanks, what they said. Yeah, it's... You know? No. Okay, so uh, a few things happened. I had a few phone calls and stuff, which has meant that I've been just cracking on. So I've started taking the... The end shells out, um, obviously disconnecting the end caps. Um, I'm actually quite happy at this point. Um, obviously, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, you know, you should have done this or you should have done that. Um, however, ugh, the I'm going to show you this in a second. There's some light, what I would call polishing marks on the crank. However, the big end shells were definitely warm. And I think, I'm fairly confident to the point that unless I find anything massively drastic and like, oh my God, it's completely broken within the next couple of turns of the engine and the next couple of shells that come out, I am absolutely going to just put a set of shells in this sorry i'm just trying to <laughs> i'm just trying to rotate the, the the hardest part of doing something like this is um <laughs> rotating the engine with the rods without the rods you know scoring up or catching on the uh, crank as you're spinning so we've got the back of the engine front of the engine <laughs> And then we're gonna do the two in the middle. <sighs> oh, I'm covered in oil. This one here is unquestionably. The, I mean, look at that, look. So I'm gonna get, right. I'm just I'm gonna do this live, live on film. Hang on. Let me just clean this up so that I can show you what we're talking about here. Right. All I've done is just wipe this with a cloth. There's no gouging, no scoring. Like when I say we've just caught this, I mean we've just caught this. And the crank looks absolutely new there as well. Like, I'm just gonna pop the shell out. Just pop the shell out, you put your fingers in and push it around. Um, the first shell was a standard shell. And this is also a standard shell. Right. I'm happy about this and I don't, I don't think anyone's gonna watch this and think that I've bodged anything or I've not done the right thing with this. There is absolutely no scoring at all in that. Now I'm just going to get up and look at the crank. Like there's even... It hasn't moved either. As in, you can still see honing marks. You can still see honing marks in the end cap. That's good. Let's get a new set of standard shells and put back together. No questions asked. So I had to skip through a bit of that because I had to be quick because I had to get ready for work. Um, I only went next door. I've got a customer to soon. However, now that I've done that, it is not hard to see what the problem was. Um, I've also had a look at everything and 
I'm, I'm not going to regrind the crank. I'm going to put a standard set of shells in it and see what happens. There's, I'm not doing it. And you'll see why in two seconds. So we are working from the gearbox back. That is perfect. That's an absolute dream. Perfect. Lovely, perfect wear. Perfect. Not perfect. So on the rearmost cylinder, that is scored and worn. However, these big end shells are designed to wear. These are designed to wear so that the crankshaft doesn't. And I've got what I think is some pretty good news hiding up in here. The crank itself looks good. Ugh. I'm never going to get that off, am I? Ugh. There is a little bit of scoring on the crank, however, for a not revy normal engine like this, I am perfectly, perfectly comfortable sending that again. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. Um, I'm not really overly interested in hearing opinions from people on whether I should or shouldn't do that because I, I kind of know what I'm doing. Um, the main thing that I want to do is let all this horrible sludgy oil drain out. And the other thing that I'm going to say is that absolutely this has been caused by a lack of proper maintenance. So everything's been soaking in my ultrasonic cleaner for about half an hour. One of the things that's really important when you're ultrasonic cleaning components like this is not to use something that's too caustic, otherwise you lose the finish and things look absolutely minging. And the other thing is to not have the temperature up too high, otherwise you can risk dulling everything. So, oil pump, give this a nice dry off. I've also, um, whilst this has been, uh, whilst this has been cooking away in here, I have spoken to a number of people who are very well connected and very knowledgeable about old Renaults. And I've shown them pictures of the crank and I've shown them the measurements that I've taken. The diameter is 45 millimeters and the crank is measuring almost exactly 45 millimeters on, from the front of the engine back, the first three of the, on the first three, um, I don't even know what they're called. Those, the bits on the crank that the cod rods connected. Uh, they are almost perfect. However, the last cylinder is down. It's not down by much. When I put my vernier across it, it was like 44.7 or something like that. Um, so very, very minimal scoring. And they've all said exactly the same thing. Don't go crazy taking the crank out and getting it reground. Instead, give it a, a gentle clean up with some light emery cloth just to make sure it's deburred. Although I can't feel anything across the crank. So. I'm pretty chill with that. Um, and then just put a new set of standard shells in. For the cost of a set of standard shells, I'm gonna do that first. And the reason I'm gonna do that first is because I don't want to unnecessarily, because a lot of the time when you strip an engine down, things can go wrong on the reassembly. And when you start doing stuff like that, you're introducing more possibility for issues and errors. Wow. <laughs> That's a bit different. <laughs> so
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently clean up the face of the crank where the bearings sit, where the big end shells sit, and I'm going to put a standard set of shells in, get it back on the road, go and enjoy it again. So, oil pump. There was a part of the oil pump um, <laughs> disassembly that I didn't show, which was this. How to assemble the oil pump. So the spring, a plunger. Plunger goes in the spring, that goes on there, that fits in there. And then you push it all in and secure it with a split pin. It's very, very simple design. So what you have is you have this and this, the two push against each other, and eventually when there's enough pressure, that pushes, it bypasses, and oil is allowed to squirt out the end of the oil pump. It, it couldn't be any more simpler, the design of the oil pressure relief valve on this. It, it's so, so, so simple. It's completely mechanical. Ooh, didn't want to drop that, but I did. <laughs> The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray these parts down with WD-40 so they don't tarnish overnight because it's going to be a couple of days until I get this rebuild finished. Oil pump. That sits on there. And as that sits on there, that spins. And that's what pumps the oil around the engine. Pumps it through there, gets up to pressure, comes around there, down there, blah, 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 and that's where it picks it up. So as that spins, on there, creates a vacuum, draws the oil up there, it comes around there, up into here, lubricates that, and then that then acts as the pressure relief valve, or it lifts it up into the engine. I hope you're enjoying this. I am. This part here can be checked. You put it into two positions and you slide it all the way forward and slide it all the way back and you check for wear there, there and there with a feeler gauge. We're not quite at that point yet. We're going to do that later on in the video, I think. Probably make a separate video for that. However, having looked at this and the fact that you can replace this, I might just replace this part. The part that goes up into the engine sits in a little joiner, which is driven from a worm drive off the side of the camshaft. That goes down to the oil pump and then it goes up to the distributor drive. You can't remove it without coming up from the top of the engine. So yeah, you could remove it from the bottom, but sub, the subframe is, is in the way. And then the oil strainer. Oh, lovely and clean now. So I'm oily and dirty, but that is us done for the day. Um, I'm going to speak to a few people now and get some big end shells for it, and then we'll get it all assembled, and then we'll check the oil pressure, and we'll make sure she's all good to go. Thank you very much. Tune in for the next episode.